This is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, if you could ring that bell and get our updates, we sure would appreciate it. Or any comments that are necessary, please type it in the room on the bottom of the of the channel. Also, today's date is January the first. I mean, the first month, Janu <laughs> January the fifteenth. Yeah. Two thousand and nineteen, and I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas. Okay, well, good afternoon, everyone. Hope you had a good trading day today. I know that we did. And so we're going to talk about the ones we looked at, traded, alerted previously for swing trades. I mean, things were just per uh, perking. Okay, so APRN, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about staff, we're going to talk about BHC, we're going to talk about CCCL, MBOT, which I'm annoyed with. And uh, we will talk about Plan, who is uh, a new, recently, you know, pretty recent IPO. So let's start with APRN. So, you know, this Blue Apron, as you guys know, they are a meal kit company. You can order online. They deliver everything you need to basically cook up a really good meal, actually. I know people that have used it and they like it. The sad thing, though, is that, um, you know, Blue Apron had losses and um, their revenues just can continue to still go down, um, you know, from where it was a year ago. So it's pretty unfortunate. But um, the reason it kind of surged today, I mean, Blue Apron, I think, is really trying to turn things around. Um, they did mention today that they are ahead of their... Uh, fourth quarter 2018 and fiscal year 2018 financial results and they will release the earnings on January 31st and they also said today that based on its current view of the business Blue Apron plans to reaffirm confidence in achieving profitability on an adjusted EBITDA basis in Q1 for two th 2019 as well as for the entire fiscal year so I will say that because of that i gotta say it's a pretty profound statement i mean they are really confident as to what's happening with the company and um you know we've been watching apron actually and jim will probably talk about that in a second but you know blue apron had a nice run today i mean it opened uh you know market hours at 113 went as high as 151 and uh i'd like to see hopefully a continuation and on the options side, I mean, you know, I was watching Blue Apron and we alerted the $1 option call that, uh, again, because I really try to focus on people with small accounts. Uh, we alerted this at like 25 cents for a $1 call, which expires actually this Friday. So it's a very short um, hold for the option. And uh, nice to see that it went as high as 49 cents today. So even if people didn't want to hold it that long, they could have sold it even at 45 cents um, and almost, let's say, almost double the money. So hopefully I'm going to wait and see what Jim has to say about this chart um, and see if he feels there's a continuation on the stock because that means the options should move more and that would be a 100% return on for the option traders. So um, Jim, over to you on that amazing, interesting chart there on Apron. Yeah, if you've been hanging around me for a while, you remember me calling apron out there the first day it came out they wanted to restructure everything back then and the stock was at eleven dollars when the ipo came out and ever since then i had a little you know i called support right around five bucks and we pulled back and hit that but here recently we've had an all-time year five days ago at 65 cents <laughs> 65 cents from 11 bucks 
the thing that I didn't like about it is they start restructuring after they came out with the IPO and it just didn't suit me well and it probably didn't suit a lot of investors well. I mean it really did a major restructuring plan and it, it, it didn't work. So I'm going to pull up the 20 day chart. First I'll pull up the year chart and let you just kind of have a glance at the year chart. This here appears, you know, when it was up here around four, we had a dip down here. Me and Vegas called this out once before when it was right around two bucks. And it ran all the way and gained a hundred percent gain up here to four, four oh three. Well in the past six months it sold off to sixty-five cents, along with the market, how the market sold off. So I wish we would I, I seen this price down here, but I didn't pay no mind to it. That'd been a time for me to probably really consider a buying some. Well, it ran up to $1.09 and pulled back to that support level at $0.95, cents, and then we've gone on up. And I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart real fast and let you look at it. So, I, you know, I've had these lines on here for quite a while. This is what I call my extended trend line pattern that works for me, might not for others. So there's the five-day chart here from $0.89 cents at $0.95 cent area. In five days, we've ran up to 151 We called it out in the room today. I can't remember exactly when, when Vegas mentioned it today in the room, it might have been right around this 130, 140 area. It pulled back to that 135, and I almost jumped in that thing. But I, I was paying attention to MBOT and a couple other stocks that I was I was keeping a good eye on. KTOV, and there's a couple others. But this thing ran up all the way to 51, 151. Here we are after hours with that kind of congested uh, resistance right there at 151. I see a continuation going on this, especially when they're talking about profitability. And if I read right, it said something about 16 million that they they have on hand. But we'll have to go back and check that out. So this is apron, apron here. Now we just went up another penny just right after hours. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the daily, and I'm gonna give you a little support area, a little channel maybe if it pulls back. I'm thinking no lower than 139 at 140 area, 145 being your first support. So if it dips down to 145, you might it, it would be a good probably first entry for you. And if not, you can try to see if you can get in at that 139. But I don't know. I think we're going to watch this tomorrow, and it's going to keep on bouncing up a little bit. And we're going to see one of those reversals that her and I have done and watched and witnessed before. And that is Apron. So the next one we're going to talk about is a Vegas pick. She picked this out, and we had it on yesterday's aftermarket report, and it is called Staff, S-T-A-F. Right. Actually, no, we had this actually on the market report from January the 6th, which was on Sunday. Yeah. Um. So I did mention it back then, and uh, I'm actually going to go take a look here at what the price was, because January 6th was a Sunday. Yep. So... I recall we were discussing this chart because the stock closed at 177 and uh, very low volume, very uncrowded. And, you know, Jim and I talked about the chart. If you guys listen to our videos and he said, you know, if you take this trade here, uh, if you decide to start a swing trade, he said, um, you know, make sure you have your stop loss at 163. So I have noted that. And guess what? Um, the swing trade, if anyone took it, um you know the stock opened on january 7th at 187 and my goodness like look where it's at now i mean it's had a beautiful stress-free move um it's actually taken actually started really getting a lot better yesterday and even better even today um it had a nice open today at 218 went as high as 247 the volume's picking up and, you know, you know, this company, I mean, staff, I mean, you guys know they do staffing. They, they help companies hiring resources. They had a hard time. I mean, you know, they had to make changes to their capital structure so that they don't get delisted. Um, you know, they didn't comply last April. They got a delisting notice that they had until November 2018 to regain compliance. And then they filed their 8K and... Uh, they had uh, Jackson Investment Group, um, you know, was part of that. And, uh, you know, the CEO said that they're maintaining their NASDAQ compliance was a top priority. They were committed to growing the business to 500 million revenue business. I mean, that is a huge number. And that he looks forward to driving forward with the plan. They were grateful for JIG, 
actually investing $13 million term loan, okay, that they gave staff. So they did, they did say what they were going to do with the funds. And you know what? I got to say, ever since that happened, it's taken a little bit of time for the stock to start turning around. But I am actually pleased with staff. And I actually started to like it back on January 6th. And for those of you that swing traded it, congratulations on your patience on this because it's taken, you know, a, a little over a week to finally see the benefits of swing trading and stress-free. So congratulations. And even the day traders today, some of you that day traded the stock, well done. And I still like staff. And I'm going to see if uh, Mr. Jim likes staff. Yeah, staff's had a low here uh, back on which to me, about the 1228, about the time I pulled out my crystal ball and said, start looking at old stocks that you used to like or used to keep in, in mind. So it was down here at 141 when we had that big market sell-off. This is on a 20-day chart, and it bounced on up here to about 190 and pulled back and consolidated in this area of 170 to 178. Now, the date that Vegas and I talked about it was on the 6th, and that was right in here on the Sunday. On that weekend is when we had it on the aftermarket report and i did tell her i said you know just anything below 163 which is right here i would go ahead and, and set your stop loss at well we never did touch that and went ahead and consolidated there for about a week and then here in the last two days and we did start to see it starting to bounce up on friday and then here we are, we've got this, we're working on this wedge right now on the way up. I'm going to pull this up on a daily one minute, or let's go to a five day. I like to look at different time frames because I get a better look. You know, I get a big picture by looking at the yearly, then I go on down to the 20, and then I'll go down to the daily one minute. The, the 20 has a four hour time frame on it. So here we are in a wedge. It kind of pulled out of a wedge here at the end of the day and come back and hit this uh, 100 SMA, simple moving average, and it bounced back up into that wedge pattern. So I'm looking for a resistance at the top of the wedge, which would be right around 250, if that's where it wants to go. But we have to break this 244. That's where we got to break it at. And let me put that trend line in here right now so I can get that in here for tomorrow when I'm going to maybe play this bounce and there we go so that's the resistance we got to break we got to try to keep in this channel if not I'll rely on my moving averages for a bounce I'm not as bullish as she is on this but I am bullish on it because it definitely it's gone up from that 140 air, low area and I've I've know this stock I've watched it many a times once it gets up to this resistance level of around 250 it kind of wants to kind of you know starts showing a little bit of stress but yet we're going to see what we can do with it and this is staf and she's okay. still very bullish on this stock i sure am and the next one we're going to talk about and you know vegas and i don't always agree on everything but we always do talk about them and and try to come up with the right answer i'm not saying i'm not i'm not negative at all on this stock i'm really really pleased that she picked this one out and showed it to me because i would have probably just shook it off but she, she was <laughs> Jim right probably shook it off because he didn't like he wasn't crazy about the volume but i really like the setup yep and it's yeah, a setup and that an matters of, uh, yeah, setup matters and it's also a good example of sometimes picking us a, a, a good chart and uncrowded trade because if you guys were to go on yahoo finance this is really important for newbies i want to show you guys this and maybe Jim can pull it up. Finviz? If you go, uh, if you go on Yahoo Finance, uh huh, and you go and type in the ticker, staff. Yep. You then go to the um, the tab there that's called historical data. That gum. And if you go to historical data tab, those of you that are listening, um, you could actually see the volume of staff and you would actually see that you know even when i talked about it on january 6th um i mean 
if there was no volume. I mean, if you look at the, even the next couple of days, two, three days later, there was nothing like 49,000, 39,000, 38,000, 25,000, like nothing. Very, very uncrowded. And look what's happening. Hey, the volume has certainly perked up. There's been a nice volume surge. So this is a really good example of an uncrowded. No one's really in it. Scanners don't even care because not enough volume for a scanner to alert something like this. And you know what? You guys benefit. And that's a nice uncrowded swing trade. That's worked out quite nice. So All right. I'm glad to hear that. So the next one is uh, VHC, which is known as Vernet X Holdings Inc. Now, do you know what they do, Jim? VHC? No. Okay. So VHC, first of all, I do want to share um, the excitement on this one here. And this was actually not even one that I found. I got to say, I'm really happy. We have great people in the room. People alert us on stuff. I mean, like, like we got like eyes everywhere in the room. But um, this company, uh, the reason it uh, came to our attention today, one of the individuals in the room, he's been following this stock. Actually, he was mentioning for a long time, quite a few years. And um, there was an appeals court ruling today uh, against Apple. Can you believe it? Um, for a patent dispute with Vernet X. And um, this was that led to a four hundred and thirty nine point seven million dollar award and then a second appeal for a five hundred ninety five point nine million dollar award is pending before the U.S. Court of Appeal for the Federal Circuit, which is a specialized Washington based court that handles patent appeals. So this company uh, won an old patent dispute. Um, so huge news for this stock and for the company and uh you know you know patents are really you know important and you know it's no wonder that um companies patent their products and uh i can't believe that someone like apple would steal their patent so if you actually were to check out this company this company is in uh based in zephyr cove nevada and they do basically internet security and software and they're a technology company with patented technology for secure communications, including the 4G LTE security. So um, you should check them out. Very interesting website if you guys are into like security stuff. Um, but anyhow, that's what the company does and this why the stock ran. So when this was brought to my attention, um, the stock at the time was, I think someone else mentioned it around $4.45. And I, but they didn't mention like that there was news. They just mentioned they're in the ticker. And I didn't really, you know, I, I saw, I didn't really pay attention because, you know, I didn't, it didn't, I thought, okay, they're just letting me know they're in a trade or they were sharing it with the room. But when someone else came in and said, look, there's news with Apple, like this is big. I thought, oh my gosh, this is big news. And so we called the trade idea on this at um, $4.90. And boy, it had a nice little run here. So I turn it over to Jim now to talk about that and what he sees going forward with this particular stock. Yeah, well, today it was a real nice run. This was a really beautiful run today. We had a real nice breakout pre-market, and it pulled back to the support level of right around trend line I have at 421, and it ran all the way up from 421 up here to the high area of right around 560, 559, somewhere in that vicinity. This is a five-day chart. I'm going to pull up. The one year and just take a glance at it we busted past the one year high we had a resistance level right here at, at that which i would call it right around five bucks and here we are we closed up here at 644 high with it right now we're sitting at 633 so i'm going to look at the three-year chart this is how i found a lot of these resistance lines was i just kept crawling up the ladder here and every time, you know, Vegas would shout out, I said, well, it's going here, it's going to go there. And I had a final target in this thing right around 755, 757, 754, I think, to be exact. And I'm going to pull up the daily chart now. This is just a beautiful, this is what you want to see. This is what you want to look at when you're, when you're really watching stocks. And I'm going to pull this up to the daily. And it just rode that trend line all the way up. Never wanted to go below it. It kept around that 
50 SMA, and then it did fail one time, but it hit this little support level that I have right here. You see that? That little support level. So I, I, when I was telling the room that we touched down again at that, that this might bounce back up from that knife we had. We had two, just two black crows, not three. And then we went ahead and up with that green candle and it touched back one more time. So you had another chance to get back in at five bucks. And then for the rest of the day, it just ran up that 50 SMA with the golden cross. Showed a little sign of weakness right in here, that little channel. And I called this out in the room. I said, you get ready for the dip. And it dipped on down and hit that support level at five. And that was real solid, real solid, because we that's where we consolidated before. So it ran on up to the 50 and just kept going up. I mean, this was just a beautiful day trade, a beautiful, uh, I mean, just beautiful day trade. I, there were some people in the room that were head back on this thing. And, you know, when they brought it to my attention and they were above even, I said, get out, take your profit. I mean, just, you know, you might not see a run like this tomorrow. But yet the news, when you mention the word Apple, and then they mention the word that they won a lawsuit of 400 and some, that's a big deal. And that's kind of like the way Mobot ran yesterday and the day before, or just yesterday and today. So it, it ran on up. We hit a resistance right at 644. I had a 654 resistance for my last one. And we had a solid support right around here, right around six something. And it did pull back once when it was right here to that other trend line that I had. So it's, I'm going to keep a real good eye on this tomorrow. I scalped it once for just not very big. I should have, you know, but there's so much going on. I mean, this market's really turning out to be a good one so far this year, even with the government shutdown. I mean, last year was just really a, a bad year for, for a sell-off especially in December and I just think it's got in shock and people are in there seeing these bargains and eating it up so when it got that news today it really took off and that that's really what it needed was that catalyst and Vegas and I we play stocks mostly on news she does her homework I do the charts we form together as a one and it just it's just a wonderful team so this is VHC. Keep it on watch. I'm going to tell you where I think the support's going to be at 574 if it decides to pull back or even play off these moving averages in a, in a daily one minute fashion. That'll be the 50, the 100, and the 200 SMA. And also keep your EMAs on watch too. And this is VHC. And the next one we're going to talk about is another good stock that we, 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 we hit today, and that's CCCL. Yeah, so you know, for those of you that know with CCCL, I mean, it's China Ceramics Limited. That's why it's called CCCL, or China Ceramics Company Limited. Um, and you know, they're a manufacturer of ceramic tiles in China, and uh, they're really more for the commercial industry. They're for property developers. I mean, there's it's not like something that you can just go to Home Depot and just buy tiles from them. Um, they actually sell to um, Obviously, they're distributors to property developers. So I guess people that build condos or also companies that build um, corporate offices, that's who their clients are. They don't really sell to, I guess, retail like us. Um, so, you know, CCCL, as you guys remember, if you uh, have traded the stock in the past, you know, they did have um, an offering uh, at one time. And uh, the offering was set to close in early December 2018. And, uh, you know, the proceeds were going to be used to fund inventory, vendor obligations, as well as distribution expenses. You know, the typical reasons why companies do offerings. I mean, why else do they do it? Because they need the money. Um, but CCCL, I mean, if you were to look at this chart, um, you know, a couple of days ago, it wasn't the best, but you know, it started looking really good. And suddenly, you know, when I was looking at the um, chart today, I said, you know what, this actually looks good for, I think, a swing trade. And, um, you know, many other people also alerted the stock. And uh, we were quite pleased with the results of this, of this trade. I think this trade here, uh, let me just take a quick look. I want to just check when we kind of talked about this in the channel today. Um, because CCCL was mentioned quite a few times. Uh, one person mentioned that they were in around 159. They 
risky. And then when I kind of took an entry was, I believe at 171. And then from there, uh, gave some good resistances up to 208. And boy, uh, those uh, were called by Jim. And uh, the float was the 3.62 million. So I actually think over the $2 was going to be a nice little run. And it had a nice little run today. And Jim, what are you, your thoughts on the chart? And uh, do you actually think this has room to still continue? Uh, this is one of the companies where I just, I'm amazed how cheap they are. How cheap the stock is. It is Me a too. low it is a low float stock and I'm looking at some of these buildings and stuff as I projects that they're interested in and these are big projects. Two hundred and ten square feet. I mean it, it, these things are huge. And they're real nice buildings and this is so and so sometimes I'm just shocked about how cheap they are. I'm gonna pull up the one year's chart. See the average high for a year was right around two forty nine pretty solid resistance at 249 and I'm just going to pull up the three year just to have one little glance at it because I just think it's way oversold and it is three days four days ago it got down to 72 cents I mean give me a break at a three year high had 752 that's more like what I'd see on stock like this with a pivot point right around here right around 277 on a yearly chart and I need to go ahead and pull this up so I can get my line in there for tomorrow. I'm finding a little resistance right here. You can see how I can draw this trend line in here. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for around 279 to 280 long on this for a swing trade. I think this is just the beginning of a breakout. I always expect a little pull out, pull back on something like this when they do that. I'm going to look at the 20 day chart. You see how we come down here from 72 cents at the yearly bottom. It kind of consolidated there for a week and then we had the big breakout on um, on 12 31 the last day of the year it ran all the way from 77 all the way up to 189 and that should have been a good eye opener for us and we also noticed that we created a channel the next day we had another new high of 208 and that's when I was calling out to Vegas I said 208 209 is going to be your hard resistance and I get that off the bases of the candle not the wicks I, I go with the bases because that's where the strength is and that's where I think I can get out easier if I wanted to sell it because I'm not the one that's going to take a high risk. I'll wait for the pullbacks like you see right here where it pulled back to $1.40, 60 cents in a matter of two days and then bounced on up to the pivot point of 173 in this channel and then that was the resistance for almost a week and a half. Then it pulled back to my support level here at 140. See where it bottomed out there? And we're bottomed out here, which was a, a high tail sign. If I was watching this from the from the morning, and I heard it come up on, I did hear it come up on the scanner first thing this morning. So I should have been wise enough to watch this. But man, you just you just can't watch them all. I mean, you can hear them all, but you just can't watch them all. You get too I get too too dizzy eyed. So here we're at 140. It ran all the way up to 208 today. It actually ran all the way up to 218. I'm going to pull up the daily one minute, and I'm still very bullish on this stock. I want to see a pullback for me to get into it, but yet, we hit that 218 high, and after hours, it's kind of trying to make up his mind. It didn't sink. We see the trend here, although the trend line, let me draw this little trend line in here so I can keep that going tomorrow also. And this is how I, I, I try to find supports on a stock when I'm looking for a trend. And I'll just run this line right up to about where I see a low here. And that runs right into the 100 SMA, which is good for me. And a lot of times these runners will follow the 50. And then they'll touch back, touch down, and squeeze right here where it tightened up, where the 50 touched the 100, but yet didn't want to go below it. And this is on a one-minute daily. And I use this quite frequently on when I'm looking for supports, pivot points, and resistances. And it followed up above that 50 all day long, even after hours. It's still above it here. So the pullback, if any, it's going to be right around 192, 189. And I find a little bit of support level right around 184, right around where this 200 SMA is. So any kind of pullback on this, I'm going to watch the tape. I'm going to watch my level 2. 
and I'm gonna make a trade out of this stock. I do like this company, I do like what they do, and uh, didn't you say today that China added a stimulus package to their... Um, yeah, they did to help their economy. Yep, because they're in, they're in bad shape right now, but I'll tell you right now, a lot of these big spenders like this, they'll keep investing. It's the little people that get hurt the most. So this is CCL. Keep it on watch. I've added it to my watch list, and we put it on our aftermarket report. So that, that tells you a little something there. And the next one we're going to talk about was a really great runner today. It was a great runner yesterday. It had three factors that I really like in the stock. One, news, which we really loved. We mentioned it in our aftermarket report yesterday. Two, the volume. The volume and the float. And uh, number three, oh, what was number three? <laughs> Having a blackout. Uh, I'll have to come back to that. What a fool. Well, you like the news, the float, and the volume. And you the know? volume, yes. The news, the float, so, and the volume. That so, I bought, as you guys know, um, had a beautiful run yesterday, and Jim can probably just go over that shortly. Uh, but, you know, and I did talk about what the company does, and they have that. Um, that product that I told you what it does for the uh, brain aneurysms. So I did talk about that yesterday and we thought, okay, you know, keep this on watch for, you know, potential continuation today. And then, you know, in the morning they did announce, you know, that they had an offering, right? Yep. And uh, I think the offering was that they were going to sell um, $3 million, $3 million of shares. Yep. At six something, and six sixty. Yes, at six fifty a share, and you know people at first were like, "Oh my gosh, um, that's terrible! Let's dump the stock." Or maybe that's what they were thinking, panic sellers. But then you know people took the time and said, "You know what? It's actually not so bad. Three million dollars registered offering for six fifty a share is not bad." And so you know it seemed that the panic kind of subsided, and then the stock kind of recovered, consolidated. And then it had a beautiful run, and Jim's going to talk about that run. But then at 2 o'clock, my gosh, <laughs> I don't even know how the Securities Commission allows this. And I think this should be like, people should be, I wish they had like a venue for people to complain, and I think we should. I mean, at 2 o'clock, they announced another offering, this time for $5.9 million, uh, uh, priced at the market shares, priced at $10. And the stock had come off its highs, and it was, you know, trading... Um, I haven't checked the last trade price, but you know, Jim's going to tell you that in a second, but I got to tell you two offerings in one day. I mean, that is just absolutely, um, criminal. If you ask me, I mean, it's fine to have an offering. I understand, but then to have another one later in the day during market hours, like that is just insane. And I mean, I've seen it where offerings happen during market hours. I experienced my first one like that last year, because I actually always believed that Offerings can only be done either pre-market or after hours. But guess what, guys? This is really important. It can even be done during market hours. So I didn't know that until I experienced it last year with the stock that I was in. And here's another example of Mbot doing an offering in the morning pre-market and at one at 2 o'clock during the market. So there's your proof right there that they can do offerings at any time of the day. I just cannot believe that they did two in one day. Just absolutely horrible. I think it's criminal. I think that there should be some rules around this. No more, you know, if you're going to make an offering, then do it all in one shot. Don't do this to uh, traders or investors because I think um, you just, you know, it's almost like, I don't know. I guess you could say, I feel like it's stock manipulation. Like, you know, your people are in, they're buying the stock. It's, it's, it's doing really well. And then bang, they slap people with an offering. In the middle of the day and then all these people that let's say bought it at a certain price all of a sudden you know their accounts get hurt and uh damaged and yeah okay fine you know what they say well then put a stop loss put a stop loss i get it but um again if they wouldn't do these crazy things in the middle of a trading hours uh you know people wouldn't be burned as bad so yep. anyhow enough of my rant uh i'll let jim talk about the mbot chart and tell us what's happening there well, I talked about how we played it yesterday, so I don't want to go through that again. Right. But definitely, it, it pulled back like I said it would, and then it went ahead and bounced on up to that previous high that we had 
after hours, which was right around 1166. Then the offering news came in and it tanked. It hit my eight. I had another support from yesterday here at 846, and that's right where it landed. So you had a chance to get in there, but so, you know, people. I, I told my I told the room just wait till the market opened before we decide to get in this or not, because you never want, know what direction it's going to go but we realized that the news wasn't that bad that three million wasn't that bad and we expected it to go back up and this thing ran all the way up to 1940 I had a resistance at 1894 we hit that and then I was yelling out 20 maybe 19 and then 20 and then I noticed we had a flag in this chart and I'm gonna pull this up to the daily one minute and I called this out in the room called a descending flag I said just get ready get ready to tank batten down your hatches it ran up a little bit from that that little dip and I'll magnify it up so you had a chance to flip this which I did for about 30 cents and then it came on back down and then the news came out with the offering and people were starting to short it I think a few people knew in advance when this was going to happen and then we had the knives and the knives and the knives and the knives and we went right back to that 846 that I talked about earlier we landed right there and it bounced up to 930 now they got a price tag on the second offering at 10 bucks so they think you know they're taking the risk thinking that the investors are going to get back in this at $10 the, the best thing about this company right now is the news yesterday it was all three things it was the news the volume and the float but today it was just running up on that news because that news was just wonderful. And Vegas read that out and said how important it was. And that's what made that stock run so well yesterday. A lot of people were too scared to get in it. But if you're an experienced trader, you realize that that was one of the best trades of the month. And it ran all the way up to 1940. And now we've pulled back here 100% back here at 930. So keep an eye on Mobot. I'd like to see it go down a little bit more before I take a chance and scalp it because that's what I'm do. That's all I'm going to do with this one from now on is scalp it. And that's Mobot. And then we got a plan. You know what the plan is, Vegas? Yeah, what's your plan? P-L-A-N. That's what we're <laughs> going to talk about. Yes. So I just wanted to mention this because this is a new, like for, you know, recent IPO. And, uh, you know, the company's called Anna Plan, but the ticker is P-L-A-N. And uh, the CEO is Frank Calderoni. And, uh, you know, they're into the technology sector and they do a lot of cloud-based solutions. And, um, you know, they took the company public and they felt that uh, they're ready to do that because they wanted to better leverage how they help their customers. And they figured that uh, they would take the company public and uh, obviously uh, raise funds for the company in order to be able to um, keep creating innovative platforms. And uh, they actually get, I just wanted, this is a really interesting point. They actually are a global company and they actually have 40% of the revenue come from operations outside the US. So that is really interesting. Um, they're investing both in uh, greenfield opportunities and also into the ecosystem to extend their reach to global customers. And um, this is quite uh, surprising. I didn't realize they get all their revenue, a big chunk from outside the US. So um, this company, I'm gonna let Jim talk about this, but I brought it to his attention because I just happened to be glancing at the chart. Um, I'm not in the stock at all, didn't even buy this at the IPO. But when I looked at the chart today, I thought, let me see how this IPO is doing. And I kind of figured that it looks like it was kind of poised for a breakout. So I'm going to let Jim talk about that because those of you that like higher price stocks um, might want to take a look at this uh, for tomorrow. So Jim, what do you think of that? I'm showing some of the customers here, and they got quite a few of them. Oh yes, they got quite a few. I mean, Box, Sky, they got Dish, they got Pandora, they got uh, Zillow, they got Demonte, they got United Airways, Airlines. I mean. Uh, steel companies that well diversified portfolio so let's look at the year chart on plan like she said it's a new ipo so it's only been open for a little while i like the up and downs on this especially the big big uh look i mean the the candles are huge 
$25 to $27. You could have you some pretty nice scalps with this stock if you're a good chart reader. I kind of drew what I thought was a trend line right here, a wedge pattern. We broke out of that wedge right down here about a week and a half ago, right down to support level, which was right around this area right in here. It's kind of hard to draw this out because it's kind of lump bumpy. It's had a rough ride, but it's also had a nice ride. All the way down here from a low of 2086 all the way up to 20 30 bucks in a matter of less than a week and a half. Then it's pulled back to this channel right here, which is right around 2434, and here we are at 28 something in two weeks. So I would keep this on watch. I'm going to go ahead and just pull it down to a 20 day. See how what I'm talking about when I say lumpy? It has nice little five day pullbacks, and then it has nice little five day runs. It's pulled back one day, and then here we are back to that resistance again, right there at that 29, 24 level here after hours. Now after hours, we're right down here at 29. So I'm going to keep this. I'm going to try to find supports on this chart as it, as we go out. I'm looking at 28. I don't. I'd hate to see. It. I mean, it can get down here to this bottom trend line, or it could even break past that trend line. So this is one that's kind of lumpy, but uh, we're going to. I'm going to keep an eye out. This is new to me, so I need to learn how to, how to, I need to learn the channel. I need to learn the history of it, how the chart reads, and this will be one that I'll probably get into when I feel the time is right. And this is P-L-A-N. And I okay, think, I just want to, yeah, go ahead. I think that's about it. Vegas, you got anything else you want to close uh, with? Yeah, I just wanted to just mention that uh, O-N-T-X, um, not loving the chart at all, but um because it's kind of look, popping just a little after hours ontx and the only reason it's popping is that they promoted dr stephen uh fruchtman to the ceo position he was actually um dr fruchtman was the former uh his role at the company was president since june 2018 and he actually joined the company as the chief medical officer last uh january 2015 and he's actually a certified hematologist a hematologist he specializes in the bone marrow diseases and stem cell uh, transplantation however uh he's been promoted effective immediately he will now become the ceo of the company he will also be a member of the board of directors uh the company feels that he is the right leader for the company he's been very instrumental to the company's progress and proven track record and uh, they want to have him in the role as they continue to advance into the phase three stage of one of their programs towards approval and commercialization for uh, Rigo Certib. So, you know what? The stock is not like amazing. The chart is just not amazing. But, uh, you know, uh, we'll have to keep a watch on this and see what it does now that they've made him the CEO. Yep. He, he, re he replaced someone else and i guess they got rid of him canned his butt so who was who was the ceo before um well you know how i am on names is uh, ramesh kumar oh ramesh kumar yeah so he was uh you know um mr ramesh kumar was already there and uh obviously they thank him for his services for his leadership and contributions and you know he did help the company though reach critical upcoming milestones but they feel that, you know, um, Steve, who's now going to be the CEO, I call him Steve as if he's my friend, you know, but they feel that, um, you know, with him uh, and the expansion of the new executive team that he put together, okay, yeah. he put this team together, that they are poised to achieve clinical progress and business objectives, which is what Michael Hoffman, who's the chairman of the Oncava Board of Directors said. And, you know, it's really important. I mean, he's got so much experience, but... I really hope that they can take some of these products they have to commercialization because uh, this stock's really pulled back significantly. It don't look and like I'd it's like going to be it. hostile at all. I mean, he's going to he's going to help to the transition, so that's going to be good. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. So this and, is uh, yeah. This is O N T X. I just want to run through the chart real fast, because we had this bonus thrown in on us. It should okay. take me a few seconds. I'm going to look at I do years. want to mention, I also want you to mention one thing after this is after this one, Jim. But yeah. those of you that are in the glue chart, glue swing trade, I think uh, you're doing great. Uh, it did close at a new 52-week high. I did have to mention that because 
Uh, it did have a bit of a pullback the other day, which we did talk about in the video yesterday, but uh, or on Sunday. But uh, it's actually turned around and it's got a new 52 week closing high. So good job on glue traders. We're going to see tens. All right. Well, here we go from 169 and about two or three weeks ago, and we're going to hit a resistance here. We hit a high of around 277. You see the year's chart. We were up here around 39. I don't know the history of this um, stock at all, so this is going to be one that I'm going to add to my watch list and just see um, how it runs and, and how she does. But, you know, that's part of learning is new stocks enter my vocabulary every day. So I'm going to take this up to the 20 day. I'm going to look at the 20 day. I don't see enough on the 20 day, so I'm taking it to a three month. I mean, about a six month chart. And I'm going to start drawing a few resistance lines in here to where I can think that I'm going to be feeling it at. And this is part of what I said I was going to tell the room and part of our viewers on YouTube and stock twits. We also log these into stock twits every day on a that we right when we finish them so people in our community of stock puts can watch the videos too so here we are we hit 169 we hit a resistance of 227 and bounced up and created a channel of 272 pulled back ran up and hit that again I'm gonna magnify it up just a little bit here we have a lot of room to, to climb but right now in this channel that I'm looking at before we get into the gap is the pivot points right around 277 so if we can bust past 277 tomorrow, we're going to start filling the gap a little bit. We're going to hit this 299 to 3 bucks, and that'll be an area for pause. Once it pauses, passes maybe 303, we're going to hit that 100 SMA, which is right around 328. So this is going through a small transition right now. It sounds to me like it's not a hostile takeover, which is good, from one CEO to another. And let's keep it on watch. ONTX. In Vegas, man, we got a lot of bonuses in on this one today. <laughs> she threw in glue too, so keep. Your, you know she, what? I was just so excited. Oh, to here comes another it. one. It was just so excited because I just saw the new fifty. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Yeah. So well, it's going to cost you twenty it. bucks. That's right. I mean, <laughs> I it's going to cost you Vegas. And, huh? It's going to cost you. <laughs> I know. I have to send Jim a, a, a gift. A coffee. As a matter of fact, I sent him something, guys. Um, I can't tell you what it is because then he'll know what I'm sending him, but I did order something for him, so hopefully he'll get it in a little while. But when he gets it, I want him to show you what I sent him, and uh, I think he'll really love what I sent him. I think he's going to love it. I hope it ain't a diamond ring. No, it's not a ring. Okay, so this is... A woman is... doesn't buy a man a ring. Okay. This, <laughs> this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for upcoming updates. Today's date's January the 15th, 2019, and I got that right. You can tell we kind of wore out. We're, the last two days have been immaculate in, in, in Wall Street, and my crystal ball did call out a rebound. So if anybody took advantage of this rebound, kudos to you. And I'm going to leave this last message saying, I love stocks. Vegas? And I love everybody and stocks too. Have okay. a good night, everyone. See you tomorrow.